Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. The media budget review has finally been presented by the Finance Minister, Ken Oforiata. But has it got the right ingredients to fast track the recovery of the economy and give us some hope for the rest of the year? Or despite the fact that there are threats to this whole recovery because of the third wave of COVID-19? Finance Minister indeed stuck to his promise that he would not present a supplementary budget and he did that, of course. Or let's also, the fact that he wouldn't seek additional spending and also wouldn't review any of those tax rates despite challenges to revenue mobilization. Well, has all these things been done to ensure that we look forward to that much recovery? Or indeed, this path, some challenges are facing some challenges. Has he got everything right for us to aid that growth as an economy and ensure that we get there. Well, on PM Express Business Edition is the mid-year budget review and the recovery of the economy. Has this review got the right ingredients and policies that would aid and fast-track the economy to growth or not? Well, I'll be engaging the Deputy Minister of Finance, Abna Osei, who is a Minister of Deputy Minister of Finance, is going to join us here on PM Express. Also, Charles Mensah, as a financial consultant, he will also be joining us to engage us and give us more some analysis to this. Abel Texan is an economist and Sharif Ghali, CEO of the Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs. All these persons joining us to dissect and look at the recovery of the economy here yeah, PM Express. We'll be right back after this break. <music> Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition as we look at the media budget review that the Finance Minister Ken Ferreta presented to Parliament earlier today. But has it got the right ingredients to aid in the recovery of the economy despite the threats of the third wave of COVID-19? The Minister highlighted and spoke about a lot of things in the budget. He was quite heavy on job creation and revenue mobilization. But how is he going to fund all these initiatives that he has allowed in the budget? Where's the money going to come from? Revenue mobilization. How is he going to get it right this time round? And why did he keep the macroeconomic targets the same? No review. Let's connect on Zoom and let me engage the Deputy Minister of Finance. I'm now saying she's Deputy Minister of Finance, be connecting to us via Zoom. Charles Mensah is a financial consultant. And Ebu Texan is an economist and Sheriff Gali, he is CEO of the Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs. Let me first get to Madame Osei of Paris. Madame Osei, um, good evening and thank you for joining us on the PM Express. Good evening, George. My name is Abna Osei Asari. Thank, thank you so much for the... So, not of Paris. Sorry. Yes. What, 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 macro, let, let's get into the budget and... The main essence of this media review was to look at the challenges around us and review those uh, macroeconomic targets. But you kept it. Why? Are you seeing something that we are not seeing? Um, um, good evening uh, to um, everybody, uh, and especially I'll want to uh, Dr. Ibu Texan and uh, um, George. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what you mean by why we have kept it, but clearly um, we came to um, Parliament to brief the House, one, on how the macro targets have fed, how our revenues have fed, how um, the expenditure has fed, and all the other efficient measures that we have introduced um, to revise the fiscal um, framework of the 2021 budget, but not adversely, but in a, in a positive in a positive way. And um, we came in with no new revenue measures because we believe that we are introducing very effective and efficient measures that will help us mobilize um, revenue. Uh, not long ago, you heard about the launch of the Ghana.gov, which is a payment platform for all government businesses, all those and engaging in businesses with government. And already we are seeing some benefits in that um, 
in that space, the minister also mentioned um, what we are doing to, um, um, he mentioned the race, which is a uh, revenue uh, mobilization pact that uh, we believe um, that if we engage into it, it's an assurance uh, measure that we are partnering with not just GRE, but um, national security and other stakeholders to make sure that we get, that the Republic gets what is due it. And um, I know that by next week, we'll be, we'll be launching this uh, race uh, initiative. And we believe that will also help us improve on our, on our revenues. And again, when you see the numbers that we presented, um, we have done more of expenditure rationalization. This time, unlike um, previous times where uh, our revenue is down and our uh, expenditure is up. But this time we have made sure that we, have, uh, we haven't we have gone over and above the expenditure targets. And the revenue has not, um, uh, I, I must say that compared, comparing this year to last year, year on year, we have seen a huge growth in the revenue, in the revenue numbers as well. And so um, we have, yes, we have come in to revise um, the GDP growth target from 5.0 to 5.1. Looking at one, all that is going on, we realize that businesses are picking up and quarter one for 2021, we have seen a positive growth of 3.1% in, in, um, in, in, in that area. So we have come up with a revised um, macro targets of moving GDP growth rate from 5.0 to 5.1. And again, when you look at our overall budget deficits, uh, that one has also gone down from 9.5% to 9.4%. And this is largely due to uh, the actual GDP growth numbers. You know, when we did the budget in 2020, March 2021, we didn't have the benefits of the end of year 2020 GDP growth numbers. But we now have it, and we have factored that all into it, in addition to the expenditure rationalization. And um, we believe that um, um, we are heading towards a 9.4% uh, budget deficit. Yeah. All these things we are doing to, um, to let um, the, our people and the world and the investor community know that we are focused on getting back on track with the Financial Responsibility Act by 2024 and the positive primary balance. And again, um, we, are, we are making sure that we live within our means such that at the end of the day, um, the most important things are the most important, the things that we are going to spend on and also try to turn the economy around through our Ghana Cares program and to revitalize the economy again and, and transform it into where we really want to get it to. So um, um, basically in a nutshell, this is what um, we presented to government. And this time the focus more is also on generating jobs for the youth. Um, because uh, we know that this has become one of the uh, major security issues across across the world. And government is making sure that um, it is putting things in place um, to make sure that we accommodate this and, and, and see to it that within a space of three years, we generate about a million jobs for mm. our team in youth. Mm. Madam, I'll, I'll be coming back to you to find out from you how are we going to fund these initiatives, quite ambitious, uh, the bit about creating jobs for the youth. Where is the funding going to come from? Where we see revenue being challenged a little bit. But let me do a quick uh, wrap with my other guest on there. There are quick views on the media review, and then I'll come back to you. Prophet, um, Dr. Ibo Texan, as an economist, a uh, quick review of this media review. Okay, thank you, um, George, and good evening to um, that to move down finance and your viewers. I mean, yeah, I was excited uh, for for the first time we didn't have any supplementary budget estimates to, to fund, and so it's good that we are getting better at our planning. And so, um, as expected of the Minister of Finance, it just comes to us and have the first half of the year. Hopefully, that what we done in March is what we are going to see, except for the revision of the GDP growth rate, which is expected once they can confirm what happened in 2020, they made a slight revision and then our deficit as well. What is important to note is the programs and policies that the government has outlined and it 
objective of trying to revitalize the economy from where it was before the pandemic hit. I mean, I, I remember in November 2019 when the budget was read and the government had outlined these plans. We were excited that our economy has rebounded and looking like we were moving on the road to more growth and expecting that by 2023, we would have made a lot of gains in terms of our macro stability and so on and so forth. The pandemic hit in March. And of course, I mean, every country in the global economy had to struggle with having to um, lose some revenue and having to incur extra expenditure to the extent that our GDP um, went up. In the 2021 budget, the alternative for government was, so how are we going to do this? Are we going to borrow all along and fund whatever deficits, or we combine mm. the two alternatives that we have? Structurally, that is how most African economies have been built. Not until we are able to formalize most of our economic activities and rely on direct taxes by collecting income taxes, we are going to always, as much as possible, combine some tax revenue generation with some borrowing. Mm. I would not, for one moment, pretend that uh, this government can develop this economy without worry. I mean, we need to look, take a second look at the structure of our economy. Mm. And the transformation that we need in this economy is to create jobs, formalize the economy, and then begin to collect revenue. When the economy has expanded and jobs have been created, we are going to move to the next phase of the structural transformation where we are going to be able to raise enough revenue that our appetite for borrowing will decline and we are going to look beyond aid. Mm, mm. So I was excited about the next stage of the, the CARES program and the precise policies the minister outlined that the government was going to pursue, mm. especially in creating one million jobs in the next three years. Mm, mm. And quite clearly, the support that the government hopes to give to the light manufacturing industry and, 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 and agriculture by supporting with funding and all of that are clear precise policies that you expect the economy of our, our time mm. to clearly pursue to revitalize the economy and get mm. us back to where mm. we are. And, and Prof, Doc, let, let, me, let, Doc, let me just quickly get, get, that, get in a little bit and just find out from you. So do you, for you, putting on the independent spectacle, you think that what they have yeah. outlined would really aid the recovery, fast track the recovery to get us there, even though we know that a third wave is hiding somewhere, that could rattle or destabilize things for us. Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, we we are doing the right thing, and I'm excited about it. I mean, the IMF last week gave the government thumbs up for the management of our whole recovery and all of that. And there's no doubt that uh, what we are doing is the right thing to do. Of course, the 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 third wave potentially mm -hmm. um, is something that we should care about, but. I mean, if Ghanaians would, in their own small way, um, protect themselves and adhere to the COVID pro uh, protocols, then there will be no cause for alarm because where we've got into now, we are just about to begin the full recovery process. And what we don't need is a third wave of the, of the COVID for the mm -hmm. economy to go back to where it was in 2020. And if we've had to sacrifice by paying higher taxes, hoping that the future is going to get better. We have to play our individual roles to ensure that the pandemic doesn't lead us to where we went to in 2020, mm, because mm. then it will mean that we are reverting the whole process of recovery. And I don't think that's what Ghana needs at the moment. Let me bring in Sheriff Ghali. You are with a chamber of young entrepreneurs. And I, I, when you go through this mid-year review, you realize that government or the minister was quite heavy on a lot of policy programs to aid job growth, support entrepreneurs and all the rest. As somebody who belongs to this club, are you excited? Are you worried or more of a, a cautious optimism? All right, thank you very much and good evening to your viewers and uh, my colleague panelists. Generally, I would say that this is um, a very good um, review, um, given that a lot of emphasis has been placed on youth, and especially creating one million uh, jobs, and also setting up the youth bank that will focus on uh, supporting young entrepreneurs or youth businesses. 
why do I say this is refreshing? Is that at this very moment where things are not too very good for us, mm. and young people are continuously laid off, and not even young people, but uh, all those at different ages are yeah. continuously laid off of work. So there are a lot of people that are currently unemployed. So it's a very good thinking, as a wishful thinking for the government at this moment to see that no, there's a need for us to at least create one million jobs. Yeah. That's is in is in place. And then with respect to um, supporting young entrepreneurs with financing. It also come at a time that it is needed even more. Mm. Uh, you would remember the African Development Bank is even currently working on uh, a youth investment um, bank as well. So um, our government at this very point, I, I think that these two things, speaking from the youth perspective, are very, very integral and they are needed. However, I will always have a stand that um, as a country, what do we seek to achieve? What are some of the milestones? Because we've, we've heard last year, uh, even this year in our budget, there were a lot of things mentioned about creating of jobs. Last year, same thing. We had a target of about 100,000 jobs, I uh, think, every year. What is the impact story? How, how far have we gone with that? That's always what I ask myself. And when it comes to the youth sector, it is something that our leaders will need to sit down and really, really understand what is happening. There are so many, so many good initiatives you, they come out with. The youth organizations are doing their best. But I'll tell you what, our problem is harmonizing all of this to have a greater impact. Mm. You have the Youth Employment Agency that has been working on the youth employment um, uh, field. Mm -hmm. What is their impact story? Can we know what, how, how much they have done? You have NEP that was given the power to uh, give funding to young entrepreneurs. Can we see how far they have gone? Maslock is there. I know they have a cup for young people. We have even the Ghana Enterprise Agency also supporting. Mm -hmm. Now you are bringing a youth bank. The question is that, is that really what is needed now? Mm -hmm. Yes, we know we need funding to support young people, but is that what is really needed? Okay. So I believe that in as much as it's a good thing, we are supposed to be happy about this. But I am not too elated about these new things or these new implementations of policies. What I care about is that, can we harmonize the already existing systems? Just like the, the, the minister said, there are so many ongoing projects. Let us see how far they have fed. And then we can build on that to come up with concrete uh, uh, projects, not to maybe set up new ones that might not even literally be what we need at uh, uh, what would be uh, helpful at this very point mm. so generally like i said um it's, it's very intriguing uh, to hear a lot of focus is given at the youth and especially at this point in time but let's go back to the drawing board and try to uh, harmonize all our fragmented projects i'm sure we we might have done a lot but because we are uh, we know that Ghanaians will be happy because when we hear the mention of one million jobs, when we hear the funding, uh, uh, we'll be very happy. We keep telling them some of these things. But let's get back to the drawing board and do what is right. Mm. But generally, uh, I'll give it up to the government for this thinking at this moment. Yeah. Mr. Charles Mensah, financial consultant, you engage a lot of SMEs. I believe that you are quite excited or, again, use the word cautiously optimistic that at least in these times, Small businesses are getting the required support from government. Good evening, George, and uh, good evening to the panelists. I think in the media review, I must admit that um, there are quite a number of positives in it, especially the ones to do with technology. GRA, Register General, you know, the digitalization of the system. So it makes it interesting. I have experience. Uh, some of my clients were to pay your taxes, um, not exactly how much you ought to pay or you are paying, but then the processes have been reduced in such a way that it's easier uh, for you now to log on and make the necessary payment. So it makes things very interesting. Um, the point about Ghana Enterprise Agency, for instance, and I like the way the minister put it, but I would love to suggest that you see, some of the jobs can be created in the rural areas. So I always love linkages. Is it possible to link the Apex Bank to the Ghana Enterprise Agency? Because the rural banks are all over the place. They have the Apex Bank. 
if anything would happen positively, then we must link them. But I didn't hear anything in the budget review for the rural banks because uh, they are there and they deal with the people directly in the rural areas. So if we deal with them positively, it will keep the rural urban migration. Okay. And it's very, very important that we look at this uh, thing. Second point is to do with, I, I like the government um, helping out in terms of the import cover. It used to be 4.5, now it's five months. So it's a, it's a positive exactly. thing. I like the point about consolidation of the fiber thing. Got tech, tech, technology and data is very expensive here. So when I heard about the um, ECG, Ghana Grid, and the National Communication and GIFE, consolidate all those ones. It makes sense. It means that cost of data will be cheaper as we progress. Uh, we progress. I didn't hear anything to, from the government about tax exemptions. There's too many tax exemptions in the system. So much as the government is going to embark on revenue tracking and monitoring, it's the exemption system that we have to look at critically. Because there's a lot of warehousing in the system mm. where you import the goods, you put in the warehouse, you pay as and when you need it. I think we have to review the whole thing. Mm. We don't need, if you want to import, you must import what you can afford in terms of the duty. If there's any way that banks can now fund the duty on those warehouses, it will help us. It will help the government itself. So that we don't always import the thing, exemption, exemption. There's quite exemption in the system. Even ministers are importing cars on exemption basis. Everybody's importing on exemption basis. And it's not right. Because if me, I'm not a minister, and I'm paying duty on my car, why should the minister be exempted? I think we should be frank with ourselves that pay the duty so you know the right cost of the car. And then it's captured in the national budget. And everybody says, this is the cost of the car, not halfway house. Parliamentarians were earlier on giving car loans, and they were exempted from duties on paying the cars. And it's not right. We should review all this and make sure that it is happening. I was so happy to hear the minister talk about one million jobs that will be created. I pray that it will be linked to SNET, social security, so that it will not be, you know, uh, uh, um, six months or one year, but it will something that is permanent. And therefore, people will be paying social security so they can depend their life on it. The point on the, uh, the last point I want to make in my initial point is to do with the insurance for unemployment. I don't think we have to do that. We need to strengthen SNET in the second tier. Because these are people's contribution. So if the guy had worked in the past and he's lost his job, there should be a window where he can depend on it, not create a new one, I, I think, mm. so that mm. it would help mm. totality mm. of the mm. country. Mm. It will help everybody. Because mm. the exemption is one, and then all, the integration linking it to the rural bank is two. And then reducing the data. When we do some of these things, we will see the real challenge. And I applaud the Minister of Finance for not raising new taxes. Because most of the SMEs I deal with, they always complain about taxes. I'd love to see one day where they'll consolidate their tax and say, okay, if you're SME, you are doing business between, let's say, 100,000 a year or 200,000 a year, your consolidated tax is 5% or 10%. It makes things easier because they don't understand so So when I explain to them that this is corporate tax, this is PAYE, and there's a VAT, they say that mature tax one, well, mature tax one, well, I didn't tax baby big. So I think there should be a, a way that we can tweak it, especially with the youth thing that we are creating. Mm. We should have one tax for them and categorize them and register them so that we know that if you're a youth, you've registered, don't worry your head about too many things. Just pay 10% of your sales and you've covered everything. George, these are my initial. Let me bring in the Deputy Minister of Finance again, just from the views of my panelists great initiatives and all the rest, but how are we going to fund them? You, you told us that you are not going to seek any supplementary budget, good one there, but how are you going to fund all these initiatives, madam, outlined in this um, media budget review? Thank you very much, George. Um, and um, I'm happy about the views of um, the panel um, today. I just want to um, put a few things across before I go to um, Okay. The question you asked. Um, it is true. Um, the last speaker mentioned about the flat rate tax. It's something we are reviewing okay. because um, 
we've gone around and these are some of the concerns that um, our stakeholders um, are raising and it is something that we are we are looking at and we believe that um, um, in the short to medium term we will have something in that in that regard so madam that sorry so our, our, um, our how, how soon how soon if you're going to review it uh, next budget no, it, it is something you no know, before you do these things you need to engage your stakeholders okay we have met um the various stakeholders and it is being assessed and so i believe that in the short to medium term you hear from government on okay. this um flat rates um or making tax um uh, as uh, easily accessible for everyone to um, be able to pay and then uh, uh, another uh, panel also mentioned the impact of all these programs that our government uh, is, is embarking on. Mm. Um, when you look at the implementation of the national ID uh, and linking it to our passports, our driver's license, and you having your tax identification number, previously uh, the thing um, for the total population of, um, of, of, of this country was around 5.5 million. Now with the introduction of the NIA and all these um, other interventions, we have about 15 million people mm. with um, their tax identification numbers. So clearly, you are expanding or increasing the tax net uh, without you having to increase um, uh, taxes. So these are some of the impacts. And then also with the youth bank, it is not a new bank that we are going to create. Oh, okay. It's more about access and connectivity. And uh, that is, um, we are going to use the existing banks like the GCB oh, okay. and then the CBGs. So irrespective of where you are, whether you are in Eninem or in Kadoaso in Etiwa East, or you are somewhere in, uh, in the in Upper West, Upper East, all you need to do is to assess this um, um, uh, funding through the banks that we have oh. around us. So it is more about access and connectivity, connecting the youth to each other and also connecting the them banks. to... Add the rural banks. Um, 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 the rural banks. And so it's more about connecting the youth and um, access to funding. So it's not a new um, program that we are embarking on. And then uh, my, my, uh, uh, we also mentioned as uh, adding the rural banks, the Ghana.gov payment platform. Um, we have engaged the Apex uh, rural banks and um, we are signing a pact with them where we also add them so that irrespective of where you are, if you are doing uh, transacting government business, you can pay in any of these rural banks. So it is something that government has thought of and something that government is doing. So um, yes, this is a government that listens and we have listened to um, our stakeholders and this is what they want. So um, we are doing that. You also mentioned that you didn't hear anything on the tax exemptions, but it's, uh, it is something that we have worked on and it's almost through to uh, cabinet. We needed to um, pull it back. Remember, we sent it uh, to Parliament in 2019. We realized we needed to engage more of our stakeholders. And so we have done that. And the target for us is to send it to Parliament latest by close of this year. So wow. we will see the tax exemption bill being taken to Parliament latest by close of um, this year. Mm. And so, um, and, yes, and, and these Madam, are sorry all to, of sorry the efficient to and effective measures that we want to introduce into our revenue uh, mobilization and to, to help us um, in, in that in that um, achieve um, our revenue targets as well without necessarily having to increase taxes um, in, the, in the in the course of the year and then let me come to the substantive question you asked um, where we are going to get the funding um, for the one million jobs and I must say that it is over a three year period and you should also know that um, we budgeted for about 4.5 billion under Ghana Cares. Mm -hmm. and already we have mentioned that we have signed uh, compacts with seven ministries and departments and agencies. And all these things, we are partnering with the private sector um, to help us in this regard. So already we have some funding under the Ghana Cares from government of Ghana. And as we partner with the private sector, we, we can also leverage on what we have and to help us in that regard. Mm -hmm. So already we have some funding under the Ghana Cares program. And in the budget alone for Ghana Cares, you have about 1.1 $1 billion. And in addition to the agenda 111 and all the other um, policies under the Ghana Cares, we have about 4.5 billion. And for this year, that is where we are looking at. Mm -hmm.
mm. starting these things. But mm. it's more of engaging with the private sector and, and, and leveraging on what go uh, government will provide for us to take off. Mm. And I know that this is something that is dear to um, the heart of the president. And this is something that we, we feel we should do to also engage our youth to them, for them to also contribute to um, um, the national uh, economy. Mm. Sorry, Madam, just a, bit of, a little bit of clarification. When you said that the, the tax exemption bill uh, by close of this year, do I get the understanding that all other things being equal, it could be captured in the 2022 budget? The most important thing is um, engaging the stakeholders, which we have done. And once it goes to cabinet, cabinet approves and gives us um, a, um, permission to send it to parliament, yes, we will send it to parliament. So mm. it is something that we are really looking forward to. It is something that we know we will mm. send to parliament mm. later mm. by close mm. of this year. Mm. Madam, are you, with respect to the, the measures that you've outlined in this mid-year review, we are almost uh, seventh month of this year. Again, as I said earlier on, a third wave is just around the corner looking at us, do you believe firmly that it will bring about the necessary recovery, fast track things, and help firmly stabilize the economy so that, I mean, everyone can get their jobs back and the businesses growing and all those things. Do you think that you have touched the right spots to stimulate that growth and recovery that everyone is looking forward to? Oh, yes, um, I, I believe we, 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 I wouldn't say we saw this coming but government was proactive in this measure. And that is why the minister mentioned that government is doing everything possible to procure about 17 million of, um, of vaccines from Johnson & Johnson. Because we believe that um, to, to give um, businesses that confidence to come back, it will depend on us achieving herd immunity. That is um, vaccinating um, uh, the majority of our population, like we've mentioned. And this has already been catered for under the, um, the 2021 budget. And we, the minister mentioned today that we are doing everything possible to bring in the 17 million. Once most of the people who need to be vaccinated are vaccinated, it will give businesses that confidence that um, they should invest, they should go all out. And already we have seen some level of trade activities going on. And um, uh, first quarter GDP growth rate is around 3.1%. And so clearly, we have factored the recovery in there. And with the Ghana Cares Transformation Program, where we are engaging um, these ministries and leveraging on that with the private sector, I believe that, yes, we are on track. And come year end, we will be able to achieve the target that we have set for ourselves. Again, I know that government might be the biggest <laughs> employer. But are you also working to incentivize the private sector as well in this whole job creation agenda? Yes, um, I mean, for the main um, business of government is to create the enabling environment. Without that enabling environment, the private sector cannot thrive. So that is what government is doing and making sure that the fundamentals are right. Mm. And uh, once the fundamentals are right and we can have easy access, relatively um, cheaper capital, um, we believe that with the coming in of the National Development Bank, uh, we will have access to relatively cheaper capital and that can help boost um, um, access to capital for these businesses and the banks as well. And you know, most of, most of the, um, the, the issues uh, to do with our SMEs has to do with access to capital. Mm -hmm. And once we are able to help them in that regard, and also with all the monetary policies and the fiscal policies that are going on, that has seen some uh, review of uh, interest rates downwards, we believe all these things will add up to help um, the private sector thrive, and they are in the position to employ more people than what um, the number of people government is employing. Mm. And so we believe that, yes, let us help the private sector to thrive. Once they thrive, the job agenda will also thrive, and we realize, I mean, this aim mm. of um, mm. assisting and also getting on the one million jobs that we mm. hope that in three years we will, we will be able to uh, mm. Mm. get for our, our team in yeah. Yeah, let me. I'll be getting to Dr. Butexin as well that on the bit about revenue, 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 and how we can uh, get it right. Because in all these things, all said and done, 
debt stock, expanding the economy. So how are you able to mobilize or how much we can mobilize as a country to fund all these initiatives? This is BM Express Business Edition. My guests may have to hold on. They will take a short break and we'll be right back. This is PM Express Business Edition. Welcome to PM Express Business Edition as we talk about job creation, revenue mobilization, all these things are wrapped up in the media review of the 2021 budget estimate. And time is not just our good friend. As time goes on, we have to be wrapping up very soon. So, Dr. Ebotex, let me get back to you quickly as we try to wrap up this discussion. The bit about revenue. I mean, we've seen some measures outlined. Are we getting it right? Or we'll end up the year again complaining that we couldn't hit our target. Thank you. Um, I think the uh, initiatives that have been outlined in the budget regarding revenue optimization is is, is key. And, and don't forget that we've always made the point that not until we begin to collect enough revenue, our structural bottlenecks will yeah. will still be with us. And and if you look at the way in which our whole budgetary process evolves over the years, it's key that we are able to raise enough revenue. And we had mentioned the need to equip the revenue agencies with all the support that they need for them to be able to maximize, optimize the revenue that they collect. I'm excited that there are precise policies that are being pursued now. Mm. The linking of our uh, um, usage of our national ID card number for our mm. team is, is very good. We've heard that Potentially, there are going to be a lot more people that will be pursued to pay their taxes. Um, the government's Ghana.gov centralized payment system is also been established to help to improve the efficiency of uh, uh, various, um, what do you call it, tax collection uh, um, agencies. Also, we are been told that the government intention is also to I see how they monitor this re uh, uh, revenue mobilization drive. For instance, the Ministry of Finance has set up the RICS, the Revenue Assurance yeah. Compliance and Enforcement mm. um, um, se Sector, I'm sorry, uh, Department, to try as much as possible to support mo revenue mobilization drive. If these are actualized, we should expect that we are going to collect enough revenue to fund our development. Mm. What is key in all of this is, and I'm excited about, is now the potential number of persons that we can collect income taxes for, which is key because I mentioned to you that it is the, 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 the high informalization of our economy that is making it difficult for us to collect enough revenues. And so if you are able to do that, and we have a court system that is, is established for speedy trial of task cases and also to even give those who um, um, want to appeal against some of these cases a, a board that is going to support them to expedite their, their appeal of some of these cases. It's something that will let the whole mm. system become more efficient in, in revenue mobilization. What is also key for us is the fact that we need to enforce compliance. Mm payment of tax. And I think it is key. Um, we should make sure that any person that has been potentially marked to pay taxes do, do not have access to any government services if the person has not filed his taxes. Mm. It's key. Okay. I cannot go to the passport office to get a passport okay. when I've not paid my taxes. And so these are some of the ways in which you can get people to comply. Mm. And that in itself also reduces the cost of collecting these taxes. Mm. Because I know that I need a passport. I know I've not paid my taxes. Mm. I know I cannot have access to a new passport. Or I need to register my property. I cannot have access to government services. So I walk into a revenue agency, pay my taxes, get my clearance, and then go on to, to get those government services. Okay. I think this is key. And once you're able to do that, okay. I think that a major part of the the structure of our economy that doesn't allow us to be able to collect enough revenues would, would be solved. Mm, and mm. I'm excited that government has put in place 
besides interventions towards that mm, direction. Mm, and mm. I think it's key to our recovery mm, efforts mm. and for it, how we get beyond aid mm, if, mm. if we are going to mm. get there. Mr. Charles Mensah, I mean, for you, have we finally gotten it right in terms of how to support these SMEs and young entrepreneurs out there? Or, well, let's wait a little bit and see. I think that you have to unmute your, if you can cl get me clearly, I'm saying that with respect to these measures, do you think that we've finally gotten it right in how to touch the right spot when it comes to small businesses? I think we're almost there with, with that. We're almost there. I mean, if I listen to my sister who said uh, they are looking at this, uh, having a, a flat tax rate for the, for, for the SME. You're quite excited by that. So, so for, for the young, can you hear me now? I'm saying, yeah, I said, yeah, I was quite excited by that. I was, I was, I was nodding my head, yes. <laughs> so when I heard that, you know, I, 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 was, I was happy to hear that. But George, I think there are key things that I, 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 I two things that I will conclude with it. First one is to do with, there are certain institutions that we have as a country. Yeah. That government has to win itself out of it. First one is ECG. Second one is Gridco. Mm. Third one is VRE. Look, we've been doing this for 60 years. I think the experience is there. Mm. We can use the second tier fund, instead of the second tier fund being used for treasury bills, to direct it to become shareholders, just like we attempted to do or we have done for NIB. Mm. We should do it to cover Gridco, to cover VRE, to cover ECG, to cover a number of institutions. I was so happy to hear initially, apart from a few things that initial people raised very about a Japan. You see, we are now going to have access to some cash because equity is the way to go, not debt. In times of crisis like this, equity is the way to go, not debt. And therefore, if you have government winning itself out of Gridco, and like I've mentioned, then we can gradually Budget have been done without necessarily being, a, we are allotting money to ECG or allotting money to Greco. On the last one, which Ken, uh, Uncle Ken mentioned about the, the cathedral, mm -hmm. was a good point. But I want to add that for religious bodies, the churches and the other religious bodies, if we devote one Sunday every month, where they do special offering in support of the cathedral. I am sure that this one million times hundred, we can raise it very easily. Because the number of charismatic churches, the number of branches of Catholic churches, and what, what would the government do? Is to encourage them and give them certificate of honor. Praise them that this Sunday, this particular charismatic church manage to raise so they will compete among themselves mm. and we can have that i'm not sure people can voluntarily bring hundred but when you do it through the churches and other religious body we can raise this money to keep this thing going mm. because it will be a good thing in terms of the cultural aspect of it we're going to look at those things you see a lot of cultural nuances there not necessarily religious mm. and mm. culture mm. is very key for mm. a country mm. george this is my key concluding point Terry, uh, Gali, uh, let me come back to entrepreneurs. Your, your, your final thoughts for you. Uh, again, quite excited that going forward, government will stick to its promise and deliver some of these things or what? Your final thoughts, please. Yes, so you just said it all. Um, going forward, there's amazing promises. Um, government should stick to them and then try as much as possible to deliver. But thank you very much, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, for clearing the fact that the youth bank we've had today is not going to be a new bank. Uh, this all boils down to the fact that we, we will need to really, really, really consolidate almost all the fragmented youth initiatives under the government. It's very important and key to somebody like me. Because my, my question will still be, you gave money to NEP or NEP to raise money to fund young people. What is the impact story? Did their, their strategy really get to the young people? Did the funding really get to them? 
Now that we are setting up a youth bank that will connect with local banks to support young people, what strategy can we best adopt to make sure that the young people that are really doing businesses get the support? So that is a point I was actually drumming on. But all being said, we are in and we think that this, this is awesome. We will be willing to support it and push it through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Deputy Minister, your, your final thought for us, for businesses out there who are still worried and skeptical about the needed push to stay alive, what is your final words to businesses out there, and even the young entrepreneurs and the youth as well? Deputy Minister, yeah, if you can please unmute, please. Okay, thank you. Yes, I said I, I think I'd like to thank uh, your panelists. Um, they have all enlightened us on uh, the way to go, given the media budget review that has been presented today. And um, like we all said, it is more about partnership. After all said and done, what is everybody, be it um, the businessman, the businesswoman, the young entrepreneur, the, um, the youth, and us all, what are we doing um, to, to consolidate all that government has done so far? So I, I, what I would say is that um, we should all put our shoulders to the wheel and support us. And if it's... Uh, revenue mobilization uh, that we, we want to improve on, what is it that we can also do in our own small way to help government raise the needed revenue to enable us raise money to fund some of these programs and activities that we all want to see happening in our country. And also as businessmen and women, how are we efficiently paying our taxes such that we can raise the revenues that we need? And also as government agencies, how are we improving on our efficiency level to make access to um, uh, certain things needed by the citizens um, easy and accessible to them? So uh, I believe that it is all a call for all of us to work together to make sure that whatever we have set for ourselves in this mid-year, um, uh, we realize it all is, is achieved by all of us. Mm. And so um, we'd like to thank you, and we look forward to engaging more with academia, and other stakeholders like um, the, pan uh, the panelists you have today to, to, to see to it that we address all the concerns and make sure that uh, we move Ghana beyond aid, like um, uh, the president has always, always been saying. Moving Ghana beyond aid, Deputy Minister of Finance, I appreciate your time so much, uh, Dr. Ebu Texan. He is an economist with the Accounts Department and University of Ghana, Lagos. Charles Mensah is a financial consultant and also engages the SMEs a lot. And also Sarif uh, Gali, he also with the young entrepreneurs. So I appreciate you so much and I thank you so much for your time. This has been PM Express Business Edition. Have a great day.